Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope the lighting is good in here. Uh, I woke up to the news this morning when I was getting ready to go to work of the sad passing of the legendary Dick Enberg. Like so many others of my generation, especially those of us who grew up in Los Angeles, he was the voice. Um, part of that great Hall of Fame era in LA from the 60s to the 70s, maybe even the early 80s. At one point you had five Hall of Fame announcers working in Los Angeles at the same time. Enberg did the Angels, the Rams, he did UCLA basketball games on Channel 5 during the height of the whole John Wooden era with all those great championship teams that lost maybe one or two games a year. Plus whatever KMPC and Gene Autry and Steve Bailey threw at him. Um, you had Vince Scully and Jaime Harin both calling the Dodgers. You had Chick Hearn, of course, with the Lakers. And then you also had, later in the 70s, you had Bob Miller calling Kings. And before that, Jake McDonald was there. All of them were Hall of Famers. I was so privileged to see Enberg regularly at the Olympic Auditorium when I was a little kid. Mom would take us, take me and my grandma and the guy we knew was Uncle Muggs, please don't ask, um, who would sneak us. They knew somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody. And we would be at the Olympic Auditorium a lot, especially on Thursday nights when boxing was going on. We used to take the, number, the old number six bus from our house in 59th and Vermont all the way downtown and we'd walk over there. Boy, am I dating myself. Even when my mom was pregnant with my brother and when she was, and he was a baby, we would go to the Olympic Auditorium. Inberg would be at ringside calling the fights. And he was doing the sports on Channel 5 and the 10 o'clock news with Hal Fishman and Stan Chambers and God knows the cast of thousands. Had a little crew cut and a bow tie. Looked like, an, like your typical engineering professor. But within a few years, he was getting that big pedigree. The Angels in the 70s stunk. They were piss ass awful. They, didn't, they couldn't win for losing back then. And we would watch, we felt sorry for him. But Inberg and his partners, mostly Don Drysdale and Dave Niehaus, God bless them both, made the games entertaining and you tuned in. You know, that era, you had like three Hall of Famers, three great announcers, like within like a few spaces on the dial in Los Angeles. You had Inberg and and on KMPC, which was 710. You had Vinny on, Vince Scully on uh, KBC, which was 790. And in between, you had Jerry Coleman, who was doing the Padre games on 760 from San Diego, which was like a local station to us in Los Angeles with that signal. And we would go back and forth. I can't believe how privileged I was to listen to all those announcers, and the great, such great announcers. All the people. All of them objective, which was like law. In Los Angeles, you had to be objective. You had to call down the middle. If your team stunk, you called it, and you said it, it was stunk. You gave props to the other team. That was a hallmark of Inberg's career. He was objective right up to the end. I mean, in San Diego, he took some flack for that. But he was, he was objective as much as he could, you know? I can remember my brother and I playing baseball. We would yell, touch them all after we hit a home run. Playing at the you know, sand lots and the parking lots where we could play baseball with kids. And the Ram, when he called the Rams, the Rams would break your damn heart. They would do it all good until they got to the playoffs and they would get killed by the Cowboys or the Vikings or the Packers or somebody like that. But Inbrook was always good. It was always, it was the glue. And always, he sounded, op he would always be optimistic, like a fan. And in those days, my grandmother lived on 41st in Vermont, about two blocks from the Coliseum. 
And those days, they this was before the blackout rules got changed. Um, and games were on TV. And Grandma would let people park in the backyard of her, her, her building, her house, for five bucks and a soul food dinner afterwards. And But she would always have the game on. And so we, we got used to listening to him. Just such a great announcer. And then he made national. Went national. Went to NBC. Was the ringmaster in those great college basketball games with Al McGuire and Billy Packer. Probably the only person that could handle that and be a straight man. And still call a game. And bring levity. Plus he called Wimbledon. He made Bud Collins listen tolerable. And Bud, Bud Collins was an acquired taste. And then the NFL, all those great NFL games. Such synonymous with the NFL, I think. With Merlin Olsen and a few others. I can't believe he's gone. This sucks. Oh, man. What a great career. What a great man. What a humble person. A class act, a pro. You always learn something from his broadcast. You were entertained. 99% of the time you got a great broadcast and a great game. But he would always teach you something. And you would learn. You would hear the humility. You would hear the sense of humor. going to cry. My childhood's gone. My condolences to the family. My condolences to everyone that worked with him or everybody that was touched by him. Everybody that knew him. There's so many people in the business that knew him. Everybody in San Diego. So many people in L.A. Um... And the three generations of fans who enjoyed his work and will always um, remember him as one of the greatest of all time. Rest in peace, Mr. Enberg. You were a great announcer and a great person. Oh, my. <laughs>